Wow. How you guys doing tonight? Good? Tired? Yeah, I'm tired too, but that's all right. We're here. That's what counts. That's what's important. So um, anyway, man, what a great worship that you guys had tonight. Can you guys just give a round of applause for the worship band? These guys, these guys are amazing. They do a lot of practice, and it's, so it's really great to see them, uh, you know, just see everything they do. I would love to see some of you other people up here and doing worship and, and uh, hopefully being part of our worship team. So anyway, so today we start a new series. Anybody saw the name that was back there? No? You guys didn't see the sign, the intro slide of our new series? There it is. Truth over trend, right? What great. And so, so last week we finished our iconic series, right? And I really want to point out because, first of all, we, we had such a great teaching. There's two things, even though this is a new series, right? But there's a couple of things that I kind of want to mention. I kind of want to highlight from what we saw the previous weeks. Uh, we talked about Lewis had a great teaching where he talked about experiencing God, God. Do you guys remember that? Experiencing God, experiencing Jesus. One of the things that I remember, because I love eating, who likes eating cake, right? So I think that was such a good, because he brought like this awesome looking cake, right? And I was probably like one of the ones I wanted to like eat the piece. And who's the one that got the, the cake and got to eat it? Oh, yeah, you did. <laughs> you know, and yeah, he actually got to eat the cake, right? And so I, I thought it was such a great thing because he talked about experiencing Jesus. It's almost like, all right, you see an awesome cake, right? For me, it's chocolate. I love chocolate. I love sweets, Any, anything like that, right? And if I, if I see, like, you know, have you guys ever gone to the bakery and you just, you see, like, all this awesome stuff? It's like, man, I just want it all, right? But, but it's great if you, you know, it's not the same when you just get to see it than when you actually get to eat it and experience it, right? And that's what he talked about, and it was, it was awesome. The other thing, we had Melissa last week. Man, round of applause for her. She killed it. And we had our awesome panel, right? And, and one of the, man, she did such a, such a great description of things that we can't see. And one of those things was gravity, right? We talk about gravity. Gravity is something that, that, that acts upon our life each and every day, right? Yet, we hardly even talk about it unless we're in science class, right, or, or, or whatever, right? But, but it's something that it's constantly acting on you, right? And we just know it's there, right? We know that, that if I, you know, if I step on here, I'm not going to, like, fly away like I'm in space or anything. You know, I just, I just know that's the way it's going to happen, right? So this week, uh, so, so again, great things. And so we're going to, even though, again, even though it's a new series, but I believe this adds on to that. And this is about our Bible, right? Why and how to, do we, uh, how, sorry, why and how do we read the Bible? How do we read the Bible, right? How do we experience the Bible, right? And it goes to, back to those, to those points that they made, which a Bible is part of experiencing God. It's part of experiencing Jesus, Right? Our, our, our Bible also has a lot of faith, right? There's a lot of things. We need to believe that the Bible was written for us, right? That's one of the things that we need to believe, right? It's part of that faith. So everything goes hand in hand. So before we go into all these reasons on why you should uh, read the Bible, right? How many of you, like honest truth, how many of you have read the whole Bible, that's what I thought, all right? All right, good. How many of you have opened the Bible and read some stuff in the Bible? All right, all right. So that's good, that's good, that's good, right? Now, let's be honest. It's, the Bible's not an easy read, all right? I'm going to be honest with you, all right? It took, me, it took me a lot of years to actually decide to read the Bible completely, all right? And, and, and it took a lot of work, right? It took a lot of commitment. It took a lot of work because, honestly, how many times you, you open the Bible and you read it and you're like, what is that, right? Because sometimes it's, it's difficult to understand, right? It's not easy to understand. But I do have to let you know 
that the Bible has a lot of truth, and sometimes we might not understand something in particular because maybe God doesn't want you to understand that right now, okay? So I want you, you guys to take that into consideration that the Bible gives us our answers. It answers our questions. It tells us how we need to live our life. It does a lot. It's a wonderful story, right? But again, not everything gets revealed at the time that you want it revealed. So I want you guys to keep that in the back of your mind again as we speak, okay? So why the Bible, right? Why? Why this book? Why is this book so important? And, and I know maybe you heard it on the weekend or maybe you heard it before, right? But the Bible has been the single most important book ever written, okay? This is number one bestseller forever and ever in history. Nothing even comes close to it, period. Nothing. Okay? Uh, it's a book that is inspired by God, according to the scriptures, right? It's a book about eyewitness people writing th what they see, okay? This is an eyewitness account of things that have happened, okay? It's considered one of the most accurate books in antiquity, okay? You, you, you know, you guys here today, we see discoveries today, today being made that prove that this book is real, okay? Sometimes, you know, and, and science is very, is very interesting, right? Because science is about proving what we know based on the facts that we have, right? Uh, you know, and sometimes, you know, science changes every single day. And we, we've spoken about science in the past. There's new discoveries each and every day, which whatever was proven maybe 10 years ago, maybe now it's different. It changes, okay? But... People have been on the quest, right? Anybody, anybody ever watch like an old movie like Indiana Jones or something like that? Or like seriously, like <laughs> that, was a, that was a really cool movie when I was a kid, right? But it was like, man, everything in that movie is about the Bible, right? Discovering the things, going on a quest to find the Holy Grail and, and, and all these things. And these are quests that every single archaeology, if anybody could find a lot of these things, man, that's the ultimate quest right? So all these things have been done because of this book, right? Uh, more things. Obviously, we, 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 this book was written in a span of 1,500 years. It was written 2,000 years ago, okay? That's how long it was written. Printed every single language, including Braille, right? Anybody know what Braille is, I hope, right? Yes, exactly, for people that are blind. They can also read the Bible, okay? There's been uh, over 5 billion copies of this book today, right? So there's a lot of facts, a lot of reasons why this book is so important. And Christianity is the number one religion in the world, no question about it, okay? You can see the stats yourself. It, today, it keeps on being the biggest religion in the world. Christianity, again, means anybody that believes in Christ, right? Catholics are Christians, too, just, just, to, just, to, just so we understand that, okay? They're not... They still believe in Christ, all right? So don't, don't shame them on, <laughs> all right? We tend to do that as Christians very bad, all right? But even this country, right? This country was, was founded on Christian values, all right? If you guys, you, you know, in the judicial system, I'm, I'm sure many of you guys uh, have studied this, right? One of, one of the practices we used to do is we used to swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth, right? That was initially done on the Bible. Today is optional, by the way, right? Because as you know, this world has changed, and part of our Constitution says that, that we, you know, those things have to happen, right? But presidential oath, if you guys know, when they inaugurate the president, what does he do? He puts his hand on the Bible, and most presidents have done that, and they swear an oath to this country, okay? Military, in God we trust, that was printed in our coins back in 1864, and it became official in 1956. Little history, all right, for you guys. Uh, but that's what happens, right? Wars have been fought because of this book. People have died because of this book. People have been, you know, tortured because of this book, right? If this book was not that important, Right? Why would people be willing to give their lives for it? Like, seriously. So you guys have to, you know, I just, again, I just want you guys to, to, uh, to see the importance of what this is about. So Bible, be, besides all that, right, 
The Bible has liberated people. It has given people freedom, true freedom, a freedom that belongs to everyone, okay? Christ spoke about a freedom that belongs to you and I, okay? He gives the freedom to every single person, not only the ones that deserve it, not only the ones that work hard to achieve it. It's the only book that gives you unconditional freedom because of Christ. No other book can do that. It contains, obviously, a message that just is for every single person. So most importantly, what does the Bible do? It connects us to Jesus, right? We have the Old Testament. We have the New Testament, right? The, the, it's just, honestly, it's a perfect story. So you can't have the New Testament without the Old Testament because if you guys, you know, read one and not the other, uh, uh, you know, it's, it just doesn't make sense, right? Because it's only a part of it. You know, there's so many things in the Old Testament that point to the New Testament. And if you don't have both, it's an incomplete story. How many of you guys watch Netflix? All right. How many of you guys love movies? All right. I love movies, right? But how many times have you guys, like, watched a series, right? You go, you know, one of those long series that lasts that last for, like, ages, right? You're watching, you're binge watching, like, like, like a gazillion episodes, Right? You get to the end, to the last season. I'm like, this is going to be the best, man. You get to the last episode, you're like, what? I cannot believe you guys ended the show like that. I've been watching for years. You know, how is that possible? Why do you end the show like that? Or a movie, right, where you watch a whole movie, you, you just like totally into it, and then the end you're like, what the heck just happened? You know what I mean? Dude, that's the same exact thing. If you read the, New, the Old Testament and, and it's not tied to the New Testament, you're not getting the complete story. The whole point is the New Testament starts from the beginning. Uh, sorry, the Old Testament starts from the beginning. <laughs> the New Testament finishes with the end, right? Everything in the Old Testament points to a lot of prophecies that Jesus fulfilled in the New Testament, Okay? That's what completes the story. So again, why do we need this book in our lives, right? Well, let's read 2 Timothy uh, 3, verses 14 and 17. And Mansi, I did not steal this verse from you, by the way. She's been complaining because she's saying I stole the idea. Somehow we both thought, <laughs> somehow we both thought of the same. <laughs> All right, so anyway. I'll give you a little bit of credit. All right, so 2 Timothy 3, verses 14 to 17, it says, But you must remain faithful to the things you have been taught. You know they are true, for you know you can trust those who taught you. You have been taught the Holy Scriptures from childhood, and they have given you the wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting in Jesus, in Christ Jesus. All scriptures, all scriptures is inspired by God and is useful to teach us uh, what is true and what makes us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we do something wrong. It teaches us uh, to do what's right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. Okay? So key things there, right? Scriptures are inspired by God, number one. All right? That means that the people that wrote... The, the, the accounts written in this book were all inspired by God. That is a reason why an old book like that can still apply to your lives today. That's the only way. Okay? It teaches us the truth. Okay? So that means there's truth in there, right? It makes us realize what's wrong with our lives. All right? A mirror. And again, I know we've talked in similar things before. It corrects us when we're wrong. It teaches us to do right. And it, it equips us. It equips his people to do good works. All right? So to kind of represent this, I <laughs> kind of wanted to show you guys some stuff. So how many, how many of you guys played with Legos? Do we have any Lego fans in the house? All right. So I stole, I stole, some, of my, uh, I stole some of my son's Legos, and I'm going to put them up here. This is, Miss, this is the Arctic. This is like, the, yeah. <laughs> Dude, he's got like bins and bins of this stuff, right? So we got, we got all these uh, cool. Oh. <laughs> I thought that was the little guy's head, but I guess it was. 
<laughs> All right, so, so we got, we got, we got a, it's a little Arctic Coast Guard Lego set here, right? And man, these things are awesome, right? How many, you know, I, how many of you guys have spent like hours building this stuff? Like, come on, give me, give me hours, right? I mean, you can spend hours building Legos, right? Now, you know, this, this is a pretty cool set. He's got, he's got some pretty, pretty big sets. Nothing like I'm about to show you, but, but they're pretty big. Do you guys know what the biggest Lego set in the world is? It's not there yet. Good. What? The Death Star? Mm. All right, all right, you guys are close. So show me the biggest set first. Believe it or not, it's this map, right? Yeah, it looks kind of boring. I would, I, honestly, I wouldn't want to build that. <laughs> but this thing, all right, this thing, this thing is 11,695 pieces. Yes. It's a big map, man. This thing is huge. Now, imagine how hard, because everything looks pretty much the same looking, right? So I'm sure that to build this thing, it's extremely difficult. So let's look at the second biggest set in the world. Titanic. <clears throat> now, again, I'm not talking about the ones that you see at Disney where the guy, like, built a giant dinosaur. No, that's, I'm talking about Lego sets, just to be clear. All right, Titanic. Do you guys, Titanic has 9,090 pieces. Pretty big, pretty big. All right, the third biggest is Coliseum. All right, the Coliseum the Colosseum is 9,036 pieces. I think it's huge, right? And number four, my favorite of all time, and I wish I could afford it, the Millennium Falcon. And this is the big, I'm not talking about the, the $100 Millennium Falcon. This, this thing is $800, all right? 800 bucks. All right? This is, this is, Oh, wait, how many pieces? This thing has 7,541 pieces, okay? Now, what's, what's interesting about this set is that, man, I, this is the manual. I downloaded this manual, all right? This thing never ends. Can you, can you believe this manual has, has, anybody want to take a while guess how many pages this manual has? <laughs> no, but that's, that's telephone pages. I'm talking about, like, like actual pages. Is that a P P PDF pages? 495 pages. All right? Oh, no. I thought you guys said, never mind, never mind. All right. I didn't see that up there. I, didn't see. I thought it said like 1,000, whatever. All right. Anyway, yeah, 490 whatever pages. All right? 96 pages. All right? 496 pages. Now, let me ask you a question. How many of you, how many of you would go through the 495 pages and build this ship? Come on. How many of you? Come on. Be honest. How many of you would go through the 495 page manual and build that thing? Man, I would do it without even, I would do it without even thinking about it. All right. <laughs> I would do it without even thinking about it. Do you guys want to know how many pages my Bible has? Yes, 745 pages. Only 200 more pages. But how many of you, and you showed me your hands before, would be willing to go through this, which is your life manual, that will allow you to live your life the way God wants you to do? How many people here would be willing to go through this manual that's only 200 more pages than that. I know you guys can read books like, like crazy, all right? How many of you would be willing to do that with this book? And we're talking about the most important book in your life. We're talking about a book that's going to that's gonna guide you, a book that's going to help you be better, a, a book that's going to help you love those unlovable people around you, Right? This is what this can do. A lot more powerful, but isn't it crazy how we're willing to do 495 pages to build the Millennium Falcon? Which again, I will do. Right? And I would have done it 10, 20, whatever many years ago. 
But it was so hard to do this, to do this. The, the, the book that was meant for your life, okay? So isn't it crazy how our priorities are so different? Our priorities are, are just completely focused on, on, you know, that's a cool set. I'm going to have fun with it. Let me build it, right? Instead of doing something that's good for us, you know, something that's going to that's gonna actually make a huge impact. So anyway, so why and how to read the Bible? What are we looking for? Now, the first thing that we always look in the Bible is the why, right? Why? The first reason we open the Bible is to answer our why questions, right? God, why do people not like me? God, why do you exist? God, why do, do, do I have to sin? Why are people evil in the world? Why do people have to die? Why are people so nasty? Why can't people drive in South Florida? Whatever, right? <laughs> All right? But it's true. Like we, you know, the main reason we open this book is for the why question, right? But I kind of want to tell you something today is that the Bible doesn't promise that every single question is going to be answered here on earth, okay? Not every question that you look for and that maybe you think you're going to be answered quickly, right? Because we don't, we don't even want to wait for the answer, right? It might not be answered in this lifetime, okay? But maybe we should be asking a different question. Because, you know, to me, why seems, you know, it, it, we're always asking why, right? Like, like, why this? Why does this have to happen to me? Uh, you know, why, you know, why, right? Maybe we should be asking the question, how? Right? Because it's, again, it's very easy to constantly be asking why, but I honestly believe that, that God and Jesus wants you to ask, want you to be asking how. And turning our whys into hows. You know, it's very simple, again, to ask why, but asking how is not that simple because we know that when we ask how, what does it require? What does it require when we ask how? Yeah, it requires action from our part, right? No, we always want to go for the easy why question. God, answer my question. Not God, how can I do this? God, how can I be a better person? God, how can I love the unlovable? God, how can I? Those things. Jesus did an awesome example in John 9, 9 uh, verses 1 through 3. And it's, have you guys heard when Jesus healed the blind man? Okay. Well, believe it or not, he healed the blind man, but the first people that were asking why Jesus healed that blind man were his disciples, right? So, oops, my thing closed. No. All right, here we go. Sorry, I pressed the wrong button. Not while I'm... T All right, so, so Jesus heals the blind man. Let's read that. It says, as Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. Okay? Rabbi, his disciples asked, why was this man born blind? Was it because his own sins? Was it because his parents' sins? And Jesus, of course, gives us the awesome answer, and he says, it was not because of his sins or his parents' sins, Jesus answered. This happened so the power of God could be seen in him. Okay? And I love that because so the power of God could be seen in him, okay? Why do things happen? Because maybe God wants the power of God to be seen through you by answering that how question. We see in this example uh, the disciples almost doing a blame-seeking question of why. God, why? Was it because of his sins? Like, like it's almost like they're judging, right? And, they, and again, these are the disciples, right? But, we, but, you know, they're human beings and they judge just like we do, right? 
But it's like, why? Was it, you know, we do that all the time, right? Oh, was it because that person did this? Was it because they did that? No. God turns it into a how-seeking question. So I'm going to tell you today, and, and again, this is going to be my main point, the only thing I want you guys to remember from this teaching, the most important thing, is turn your why into a how. Stop asking why all the time. Search in this book and look for the how, okay? How. Some questions. They're dumb questions, but the first one is, why do I lie, right? Maybe we should, instead of asking, why do I lie, maybe we should be asking, God, how can I be better and stop lying? Question number two, why is there hate in the world? Well, maybe we should stop asking why is there hate in the world and start asking how can I use God's love to stop the hate, right? Because we always want to blame everybody else, right? And, that, and again, blame-seeking word of why to a action word of how. How means us. We have to take action, not just God. He puts us here to take action in his name, right? Another question, how do I, uh, why do I talk bad about others? Well, guess what? How can I be the loving light and encourage those people around me, right? Man will ask why. Jesus will tell you how. You know, there's so many questions, right? And again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm we're not judging anybody, right? I just want you guys to look at a different perspective, okay? We all have questions. Uh, the questions sometimes are not easy to find. The questions sometimes are not clear or super clear, right? Uh, but again, as I told you at the beginning, I believe that God reveals those things at the right moment. I've opened the Bible many times, and when I open it, sometimes I read some random scripture, and it just happens to be what I needed to read in that moment, okay? Just coincidence, right? I don't think it's coincidence. I think it's God, you know, just telling me what to read in that moment. Some of you have questions, you know, why, you know, why are my parents getting a divorce? Very common question today. But maybe we should be saying, how can I love my parents during the divorce instead of just blaming them for it? Why am I getting bullied in school? That's a, that's a big one today, right? I mean, it's been big always, right? Uh, maybe we should be asking, how can I love my haters? How can I love the people that, that hate me the way Jesus did? Why do I want to stop living? That's a, another huge question today. And maybe you should be asking, God, how can I use my life to show your love? How can you use my life to show your love? God put you on this earth for that purpose, okay? It's clear. It's clear in that book. It's clear in that book, okay? There's no questions about it. He put you in this earth for, for, for his message. So how do we read the Bible? How do we read the Bible? Well, you got to open it, right? It's now, now magic in reading the Bible. It's different ways. Uh, I've done, I'm not a reader, so for me, for me, this was one of the most difficult challenges I ever did. I honestly did it with the audio Bible, <laughs> all right, <laughs> just to prove that I hate reading. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I know you guys love reading nowadays. I wish, unfortunately, when, when I was taught how to read, it was the most boring books ever. You guys... Had your awesome, you could pick whatever book you want. No, that wasn't the case. All right? But all you got to do is just open it. You got to open it and discover all the great things that are, that are in this book. What does Jesus have for you in this book? And, of course, I'm going to do a challenge because I always love to challenge you guys. And, and 
you know, we're, we're actually thinking as a, as a team, you know, what, what can we do, right? How can we challenge our students to actually open the Bible and read? So there's a couple things that we're, that we're going to do. And, and again, this is going to be for your, for your own. Uh, we're going to do a, how many of you guys have used the Bible app or you have the Bible app on your phone? Okay, great. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to download the Bible app. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is I have created a plan. All right. So what, so what we're going to do is uh, I created a plan, and you guys are going to see the QR code up there. Now, this is a big challenge. I didn't want to do just like a cheesy, you know, challenge. All right. If you guys want the QR code, I, I think we have some printouts too, so you guys could scan it. All right. So what I want you guys to do, and again, I, you know, I... I I want this to be interactive, right? So the way it's going to work is that you guys sign up for the plan. I'm going to be reading with you, okay? So I'm going to be forced to actually read, all right? I'm going to be reading with you. So this is my commitment too, all right? This is my commitment uh, because I want you guys to be inspired, and I want you guys to, to do it with me, all right? It's 180 days, all right? So this is, it is a... Six-month commitment. Now, listen, I did pick something that it's, it's short, okay? It's literally a couple of minutes each day. The only thing that's going to be required of you is that every day there's a little thing where you put your comment. You're going to put your comment on what you read that day. What is your take from it, okay? Now, to make this even better, right... Because I know you guys are, you know, I know you guys don't need any incentive. I know, because you guys are awesome. You guys are Jesus-loving, uh, awesome youth group, right? But just in case <laughs> you need a little nudge, all right, we're going we're gonna to spice it up, and we're going to give you guys the one, the people that participate, we're basically going to pick a person that is going to get two tickets to Universal, all right? <laughs> All right, so at the end of the sixth month, the people that participated throughout the whole 180 days, every single day, day doing your comments, all right, will be entered for your chance to win two tickets to Universal. Yes. Now, I understand your lives are busy. If you guys skip a day, you can make it up the next day. That's okay. I just don't want to see, like, you know, you wait to like the last month, no, okay? So it's okay if you had to skip it a day and, and do two the next day, that's okay. That's acceptable, okay? But I want you guys to be continuous with it, all right? You guys taking on the challenge or what? Yeah. All right, all right, all right. I hear a lot of noise on this side. You guys taking the challenge? Oh, oh come on. <laughs> all right, so that's what, we got, that's, so that's, that's what we're going to do. All right, so every day we're going to participate. Our leaders are also going to participate. Uh, so they'll be in there, and they, so it's a Bible challenge for the whole group. All right, anyway, let's pray, let's pray. Let's pray, let's pray. Bow your heads, let's pray. Father, man, I want to thank you, first of all, for the opportunity, first of all, for the privilege to just be able to teach your word, God. That doesn't come easy. Uh, God, I take it with a heavy burden, God, that you put this burden in my heart. But I truly feel that we need to be more involved in your word, God. I pray, God, that you will utilize this message, that it will touch the lives of our youth, of our, of our leaders also, God, and that we will be able to use what we learned today, God, to be able to, to just get into your word, to be able to enjoy, be able to open up the Bible, God, and just discover all the wonderful things that you have in that book that's inspired by you for us, God. We know that's our life manual. We know those are the building blocks of what we believe in, God. 
And I just pray, God, that you will use us to understand, that you would allow us to understand the words that are in that beautiful book, God, and you would, you would use that to, to, to make our lives better, God. So I thank you, and I pray all this in your name. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. That teaching was so awesome. We hope you guys enjoyed it. We want to make sure to remind you guys to make sure you like, comment, and subscribe because there's tons and tons of great content on our student page. We also want to let you guys know that if you want any more information about Oasis students and Oasis Church, make sure you guys visit oasis.org slash Oasis students for any information you guys may need. And we hope to see you guys soon in the future.